But that cost you plenty. It didn't. It didn't cost him anything. He stole it from Mr. Devold. The sheriff? Yeah. He's with my father. My father's a detective, and they're after him. I feel I told you not to make things up. I'm not making it up. It's the truth. It's worse all the time. I guess the next thing he'll be telling you is that I'm a murderer. Yes, he killed his wife. A trout hatchery, high in the mountains, made to order for Richard Kimball, fugitive. Far off the main road, a lonely job. Too lonely for most men. Fellas are following me to see where I dump these fish. Oh, just want to catch a few. Uh, somebody's got to catch them sometime. Not these. They're only seven inches. Wait till they grow up. Pan-sized, real sweet. Just as good in my belly as the next fellas. Uh, you know, I was given to understand that the hatchery raises them fish for the public. That's right. Well, I'm public. I'm guaranteed 100%. 14 carat public. So why don't you just do your job and dump the fish, huh? Well, I will when I find the right stream. You was headed somewhere. You must have had a stream. I guess I lost it. When you're figuring on finding it again. When you two hotshot fishermen get off, huh? Uh, mister. <sighs> what it's worth. My name's D. Bold. Sam Devo. Now, why don't you go on ahead and plant them trout and make believe you never saw me? And maybe I can do you a favor sometime. Maybe when you come into town, huh? I don't get into town much. this branch? There's all kinds of ways a man can look at a branch. What do you mean, scared? I don't know. He didn't act scared. No, oh, it's something, you know, like I talked to him someplace or somewhere. Oh, you know, meet Jake, it'll come back. Any more? 
more for the set? Yeah, a lot, but I got Jim Brown and he's the hardest. I had to trade two rams and an eagle for him. Ah, he's worth it. Bet they got a lot of deer up in those mountains. I guess. And a lot of neat trails for hiking. I suppose. Dad, you think you'll get some time off this summer? Well, yeah, maybe. It's, um, it's hard for me to get away, Phil. You got away now. Well, I, uh, I drive your grandma back. She could have flown. No, she's scared to fly. She's an old lady, Phil. She's been sick. Oh, maybe later in the summer, uh, I get a break and things ease off. You find that killer, that Kimball guy. Well, some men drive taxis and uh, some men sell clothes. I'm a detective. Would you rather I weren't? Oh, no, sir. I wouldn't trade a detective for anything. You'll find him. You wait and see. We'll get some time off. Sure. You gonna check him pretty soon, Dad? Uh, pretty soon. Why? I gotta stop anyway. Okay. Street to Vanguard and tell Peters I said to give you a hand. Captain Carpenter. Hello, Captain. Phil. I'm glad you're early. I tried to get you at the motel. Oh, anything wrong? You had a call. This peace officer going through some old wants thinks he might have a fix on Kimball. Where? It's a little place called Northby. Northby, Wisconsin. That's in Varden County. Well, he said to tell you that he wasn't sure of the ID, but he'd be glad to grab him and hold him. No, he'll scare him off. He can't be more than about 200 miles. It's early. Uh, tell him I'm coming up. Tell him I'll be there in three, four hours. I'll call you. Take a little side trip up to the mountains. You gonna take some time off? Well, yeah, maybe. But lucky, maybe. Oh, now, Sonny, this is police business. You wouldn't want to get in the way, would you? I just want to see you catch him. Just like your daddy. Got to be there yourself. Now, you stay here, Phil. Ain't no punishment staying here with Mrs. D. Bowl. She makes just about the best cookies in town. I don't want any cookies. Well, that's enough, Phil. We won't be long. You'll be able to see him when we bring him in. You ready? Uh, almost. I've uh, got a gas up the car. I ain't got but half a tank. Well, how far is it? Hmm. From here, it's about uh, 12, 14 miles. Uh, half a tank ought to be plenty. I guess. Uh, yeah, you can break out a couple of carbines and uh, get some extra ammo. I'll see you later on. Okay. Oh, save yourself. Oh, you'll be fine. Hey, Phil. Hey, Phil. Hey, Phil. Hey, Phil. Something wrong? Yeah, I left my football cards in the car. Well, you ain't gonna get them just standing here. And you ain't going to get no ice cream, neither, unless you hustle yourself right back to the kitchen.
electrical car. Well, it's in town being fixed. What about this truck? I'll never catch him in that thing. Well, ain't my fault. You got the keys in the wagon. So that makes me outdone. You think it makes you smart? Smart enough for one of me, you wouldn't be on this trail in the first place. Lost in five minutes. Come on, climb up here. All right, what's your name? Now, come on, what's your name? I'm Phil. Phil who? Phil Gerard Jr. Thank you, Major. First Street National Guard unit. They've got that cop drop already. You don't think it'll do any good? You're running the show. Well, we're getting eight men from the sheriff in Melrose. Yeah, that's what he said. Four from Wilson, six from La Crosse. They ought to be able to keep the main roads covered. There's only about a hundred back roads, and they don't show on no maps. Well, that cop that can make all the difference. A white station wagon on these green hills. Les Kimball ditches the wagon and goes by Shanks, Mayor. He might. He knows every back trail around here for 20 miles. Now, I offered to pick him up and hold him. You had your chance. I know. Now, did I want some help in looking, I'd ask the boys in the fire towers. Fire towers? The lookout towers for the Forest Service. Uh, Sheriff D. Bold here. Sam, the boy's gone. What? Uh, now listen, honey. Sugar, now calm down. Ain't nothing to worry about. Uh, kid don't just disappear. Did you look in the tool crib or? Mrs. Debold, this is Lieutenant Gerard. Not but clean off my pins, Lieutenant. I had his ice cream all dished out. He went out with you. No, sir. He he asked if he could go back to the car. Said he left something there. Some kind of cards. Oh, yeah, his uh, football cards. Well, anyways, when I, when I come out, he was nowhere to be seen. And the station wagon was gone, too. So, well, well I thought maybe if you, if you looked in, in the back of the wagon. Lieutenant? Now, Mrs. Debord, listen carefully. This is very important. He wouldn't go anywhere without those cards. So I want you to go out to my car now and look on the seat. Already did that, Lieutenant. Was nothing there. You stayed with that lady like your father told you to. You know who I am? Well, do you? Your name's Kimball, and you killed your wife. That's not true. My dad says so. Your dad is wrong. You want me to go by what he says?
You see what you have in your hand. Come on. Football cards, huh? No Johnny Unitas? Boy, I ought to have a Johnny Unitas. How far back have you been dropping him? Not far, honest. Now listen to me. I'm not your father. Now, if I killed my wife, I'm dangerous. If I didn't, I'm tired of running. Either way, you'll be a smart boy if you just sit there and behave yourself and don't try anything, all right? All right. You can see how those fire towers are located. There are two to every sector. And those high-powered glasses, they don't miss much. Yeah, <laughs> if he stays in the open places. But if he ditches them under the trees, that's a different story. Car's here. Is that on the two-way? He wouldn't think to have it on. Give it to me, please. And uh, turn it on. Lieutenant Gerard, a National Guard helicopter. Lieutenant Gerard, Mel Haney, come in, please. Haney here. Go ahead, Lieutenant. Have you seen anything? A couple of camping parties is all, but I've still got the north side. I can cross the ridge before it gets dark. All right, check back with me, please. Will do. You stay with it. It gets cold up in them hills at night. You said there were some blankets in the wagon. Well, it wouldn't do much good if they ditched the wagon. It's cold up there, no food. You know something, Lieutenant? If he was my kid... He isn't. I saw some canned stuff on the wagon. They'll stop need. Oh, sure. We're hot on Kimball's tail, so he's gonna stop and feed the kid. Uh -uh, I'll tell you what he's gonna do. He's gonna look out for number one. He's gonna dump that kid somewhere anyway. Up in these woods, it doesn't matter much where either. Oh, I know Kimball. I know everything about him. The kind of food he likes, the kind of books he reads, what kind of toothpaste he uses. I know him. I know what he'll do. He's in a jail. You said he was a killer. The jury said that. <laughs> I'll stop and feed the boy. It's all right, tell him. You might like to try it. Are you going to let me go? First chance I get. <laughs> Fella, I don't like playing games. You want to play cops and robbers, you'll have to play with someone else. 
All right, little hot suit, coming up. We don't need much more. Yes, sir. I know from camping with Dad. You better hurry up. It's getting late. Yes, sir. Need any help? Father taught you how to make a fire, too. Go on. Go on.
gonna walk? I'm gonna walk. You invited to come, do you stay and meet him? Stay? The towers will have spotted the fire. Your father's been notified. He should be here in a couple of hours. Just stick in the wagon. Hey, mister! Mister, wait! Wait a minute! Wait! Oh, don't make me stay, please! Well, you'll be all right in the wagon. You've been camping before. Not like this, not alone. I'm scared. Please, I'm afraid of the dark. I've always been. All right, there's an old jacket in the car. Well, go on, what are you waiting for? I guess I thought... Just turn out the spotlight when you're there. Go on. Place to camp. We're gonna need some pine. Yes, sir. You got any matches, Phil? No, sir. Well, let's have a look. Now, you don't want me to search you, do you? Father tell you it wasn't safe to play with matches. Well, he had us clump it up here like an army tank. You figured he was gonna sit here and wait? I didn't figure he'd be here at all. Well, you had the boys up in the towers trying to spot a campfire. Makes we're closer than we were an hour ago. Let me have a flashlight. Well, he's on foot, so he's gonna try to make time, not let any little kid hold him up. I mean, assuming the kid's still with him, assuming he didn't ditch him someplace already. He hasn't ditched him yet. Well, he ditched the car just like I said, didn't he? All he had was half a tank of gas, just like you said. That's Phil Swiller. Okay, so he was here. That don't mean nothing, don't make much difference. Nothing we can do till morning, not knowing which way they headed. Don't leave it. See that sleeve? What direction is that? Oh, that's uh, south by west, uh, heading down Melrose Way. Phil never put a sweater down as neatly as that in his life. Melrose Sheriff Station. Come in, Melrose Sheriff Station. Melrose, Sergeant Maynard, go ahead. This is Lieutenant Gerard. I think we got it pegged. General direction south by west, moving towards Melrose. That puts it up to you. I'll tell the sheriff. Thanks. Oh, Lieutenant, I've got a kid myself. We'll stay on it until we pick them up. I appreciate that, Maynard, very much. Over and out.
morning. Good morning. Just admiring your fishing pole. The joys. Just like that? For nothing? Taking that gun out of my face. And maybe letting us have some breakfast. Well, now I never did have no resistance against making a good deal. Hey, that is a good trade. But that cost you plenty. It didn't. It didn't cost him anything. He stole it from Mr. Devo. Sure? Yeah. He's with my father. My father's a detective, and they're after him. And Phil, I told you not to make things up. I'm not making it up. It's the truth. It's worse all the time. I guess the next thing he'll be telling you is that I'm a murderer. Yes, he killed his wife. no skin off of me, except I'm going to have to change the deal some. If you want something to eat, you're going to have to work for it. Come on. like a regular wildcat. Had to shoot him in self-defense. They tell me the deer are out of season. They tell me the wives are, too. You don't talk about me, and I won't talk about you. Want to trade? I'm trading. I figured you would. You almost earned your breakfast. It's right over the rise. traps. Keep my camp meat back here. The law gets kind of snoopy. I reckon you know about that, though. Didn't hear you tell him thanks, boy. Well, now look, son. Just cause a man kills his wife. I didn't kill my wife. I know. I didn't kill this deer, neither. Corbett, you home? Uh oh. That's Matt Davis, the game warden. Keep him quiet. Hello, Matt. I wasn't looking for you up this way today. Come on in. Anytime you don't keep one eye open for me. The fire tower asked me to check. See any strangers around? Man, the kid. Man, the kid? The man's name's Kimball. Sure, he's in this area. He's a murderer. Grabbed the kid yesterday. Any reward offered? Well, not that I know of. No, I haven't seen him. But if he shows up, well, I'll get a hold of you. You do that. Hey, I walked you part way down the hill. Man, 
sure there ain't no reward offered for that fetter. I'm sure of one thing. If you saw him and didn't tell me, you're in big trouble. Hey, you be a good boy. Don't try anything. You and I talk a deal. I didn't mean it. It fell. I didn't mean it. Like you didn't mean the cards at the fire. Honest, I didn't do it on purpose. Didn't you ever get blamed for something you didn't do? I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. They both must have heard it. Corbin will get you back to your father. He deserves you. All right, back off. In the other room, move. Davis to Moose Peak Lookout. Matt Davis to Moose Peak Lookout. Moose Peak Lookout, go ahead. They said Corbin would be waiting to take us up. He shouldn't have come down. <laughs> take us a week to get up there without him. That's him. I'm Lieutenant Gerard. Howdy. I got a nice fat buck waiting for you up yonder. How far? Oh, about a half a mile. Straight up. That it's not a toy. I know. Is this the switch when you want to talk to somebody? Yeah, I ask you to leave it alone, Phil. Haven't you done enough damage already? Just keep your hands to yourself. Uh, yeah. Better keep this out of his reach. You too.
I'll be right there. You said half a mile. Oh, well, now, I never measured it. It's just up here a little ways. to say thanks. Yes, sir. Good boy. You didn't have to come back. You knew they'd be here pretty soon. Could you tell me something? you know everything. My dad, he says the jury was sure. Well, people have always been sure, Phil. Sure the world was flat. Sure they could make uh, gold out of lead. They were sure that if a mad dog bit them, they'd die. Being sure doesn't make you right. He got away. What about the boy? I don't know. Kimball clipped me. Which way would you guess? Well, all I can say is we never run into him coming down. Lucky you didn't break your leg. Does it hurt much? No. What's the matter? Come on, what is it? You and Dad, you can't both be right. Help! You better run. Help! You won't tell him which way I've gone. Even if your father asks. Uh, Phil, one break. I just cut my foot. He said I better get to a doctor. Where is he? Phil? Dad, he came back and he helped take off the trap. Wait, which way did he go? Phil, don't you understand? He's wanted for murder. He says he didn't do it. Of course he says that. And if he's right? If he's right? Well, that means that I'm wrong. Doesn't it, Phil? Which way? You get your walkie-talkie back to the cabin? Yes. We'll call a fire tower on the way down. Tell them to contact the Melrose Sheriff and tell them to change of direction. He's moving north by northeast. All right. Get the boy back down to the car. Dad. 
Yes, Phil. He really did go the way I said. I wasn't lying to you. I never thought you were. Well, it wasn't your fault he got away. He is smart. I hope you understand that. Yes, sir. But not that smart. He'll make a mistake. When he does, I'll bring him in. Then I'll take some time off and we'll go camping, right? Yes, sir. For Richard Kimball, another shabby room, another lonely night, another reaching out to touch someone he has met along the way. That is how it is. That is how it must remain. Richard Kimball is a fugitive.